I hope that, well, my kids and my grandkids are like, Grandma Candy, because that's what I want to be called. Grandma Candy. (laughs) (laughs) She's the best. She's so fun. Mm. She loves me. She wants to play with me. Mm. And I really hope, I mean, if I can have one legacy... Life is like a roller coaster, but it's better when we go through it together. Welcome to the Candace Cameron Bure podcast. We're here to share conversations about life's challenges, celebrations, and everything in between. Our guest hosts this season have been Dr. Josh and Christy Straub. Come join us for our final episode. Guys, welcome back. Uh, I'm like happy, sad. Me too. (laughs) Me too. It's kind of surreal. This is our last episode. I know. I know. Crazy. It's been such a journey and Mm -hmm. an amazing one. I'm so glad we had these conversations Mm -hmm. and also got to just reconnect as as friends and family. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. Honor. Like it's just been such a good conversation. I think I only feel like filled up. Like leaving f- yes, encouraged. Me too. Me too. You That's guys have given me so many things to think about. Hmm. Well, I, we got, I mean, the conversations we've had with your family, with you, I mean, I feel like that I'm, I'm leaving yeah. filled going, oh, I want to do that. I want to do that. I was very yeah. inspired by Val and just his discipline and the way who he is as a father and yeah. a husband and just, uh, yeah. So, so and it's been a blessing. You. And big like, time. let's dovetail off that for a sec though. But like, Val, but then listening to Natasha and Max, like them emulating and uh, they've absorbed it all Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you see it in them. And we didn't get to talk to Lev, but I know that's true for him too. Yeah. Yeah, it And that, that really speaks to what our topic is about today. And I think we're ending on a really great topic and it's rethinking the household for generational blessing. Oh, this is one of my favorite Leaving a legacy. This is like, to me, this is what it, this is what all of the other episodes were leading to is mm-hmm. this right here. Cause mm-hmm. this, it's our kingdom. We're building for the kingdom of God. That's what, yeah. Yeah. what a privilege, yeah. like what a privilege it is. And so I would love to wait. Throw, can, well, can I just ask you, what does that mean when you say that? I that? think for people listening, like we're building for the kingdom of God. Like, yeah. What I was going to explain that, but uh, yeah. You want me to explain it now? Yeah. So yeah. I'll explain it now. Cause okay. you just said it. And so, I think people are like, what, is, maybe what does that mean? So let me explain this. And this, this was explained to me. I, I, I love the way that this kind of plays itself out. So my friend, Jeremy Pryor kind of gave this talk one time uh, to a group of us men. And it was this whole idea that he learned that maybe more as growing up as a Christian, that he learned that there's a Genesis three to the gospels narrative that Genesis three, we are fallen sinful human beings and we're in need of a savior. But then what comes in is this Gnostic view into Christianity of, okay, now that I've become a a Christian, now all of a sudden I just wait for the world, for the rapture Mm -hmm. to come or whatever I'm waiting Mm -hmm. for. And I don't really have any purpose beyond, okay, now I'm saved and I'm going to heaven. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is no, you're living in eternity right now. The gospel starts in Genesis chapter one and it ends in Revelation where it begins in beauty, it begins in creation and beauty and in the garden of Eden and it ends in beauty and it ends with, uh, so even in the, in the last chapter of, of the famous at home book, uh, I, I, I wrote this down cause I, I just think it's beautiful. My friend, uh, pastor, Rich Velodas, he's, he's a pastor, uh, in New York city, but he, he, he writes this, he says, um, the new earth, um, uh, the new earth, the Bible doesn't end with souls ascending to a disembodied heaven, it ends with a fully embodied heaven descending to earth. Mm -hmm. We will be fully bodied humans on this earth, on the new earth. And everything that we do right now on this earth as kingdom followers, as as, as Jesus followers, we're building for that. Mm -hmm. So even this podcast, every prayer you pray- You're tripping some people out because some people have different theology on this and I don't know my- heaven theology that yeah. well because yeah. i've heard so many different uh-huh. points of view yeah. on theology yeah. yeah but anyway keep going so yeah. so i genuinely believe that we are we are building for that we get to build for the kingdom of god right mm-hmm. now as jesus followers we're asked to go and make disciples yeah. baptize in the name of the yeah. father son and holy spirit baptism yes there's the there's water baptism mm-hmm. but we're also baptizing in community 
We're baptizing people to, to, to experience the love of Jesus, to experience presence. And, yeah. and I think that that's what we're called to go out and do is to make disciples. Mm. And so everywhere that we go, then we get to carry the kingdom of God with us. Yes. And, and so I'm, I'm going to give this analogy. Uh, this is my friend gave me this analogy and I think it's a very helpful analogy to think about. It's, it's helped me a lot. So let's imagine that the kingdom of God is the United States of America and Jesus is King and Texas, which wants to secede from the union decides to rebel mm -hmm. from the kingdom. And they're like, Nope, we're out. We're seceding from the union. So the King Jesus has a couple of different options. He could go down and forcefully take back Texas, but that's not who Jesus is. He could also go, you know what? You're going to rebel. Just go do it anyway. Right. What, yep. what do parents do? We yeah. go, Nope, I'm doing, you're going to do this because I said so, or that nah, doesn't really matter. Is it the authoritarian parent or the permissive parent? No. What does Jesus do? He does the emotionally safe thing. He does the, he does the <laughs> loving thing. And he, he leaves Washington DC. He leaves his throne. He goes to Texas. He puts on his cowboy boots and his cowboy hat mm -hmm. and he steps foot in the Texas and he goes, Hey, I want to love you back into my kingdom. Mm -hmm. And, and, and in, and in Mark chapter 10, he, he says, you know, the breaking news cycle back then in that time wasn't, you know, the breaking news cycle we have today. Someone walked into the village square and we'd be like, Hey, this is the news. Well, Jesus, it says after John, the bapt after John, the baptizer, after John was arrested, Jesus walks in. And he says, the kingdom of God is near, repent and believe, repent of your sins and believe the good news. So he says, the kingdom of God is near. Well, the disciples actually believed that the kingdom of God was that he was coming to physically take over the Roman empire, that he mm -hmm. was coming. That's why they waved mm -hmm. palm branches. He thought they were coming to fulfill Sukkot, but what they came to fulfill was Passover. So in other words, they came to fulfill, he came to fulfill Passover. So that means this, what he meant was the spatial kingdom of God is here. So the reign, the rule and reign of Jesus is not here yet on the new, on the new earth. That's not here yet. He didn't come to fulfill Sukkot. That's still to come his second coming. Mm. But what he did do is he died on the cross. He, 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 now all of a sudden that when we come to know Jesus, when we come to accept him into our hearts, mm. he rules and reigns in our hearts. Yeah. Well, what is a kingdom? A kingdom is a dome over it's the effective rule where a king reigns. Now there's a king dome. Everywhere we go, we carry the king. We carry the kingdom. So the first house might say, yes, I believe in you, Jesus. But mm -hmm. then the second two houses might not. But then that's why it's the spatial kingdom of God that we're living in now, because not mm -hmm. everybody's a believer. Mm -hmm. Not everybody has experienced the love of God. But guess what we get to do as Jesus followers? We now get to carry that everywhere we go. And when our kids come to know him, they get to carry him everywhere they go. And that's what I mean by every prayer we pray, every, we are all loved by the father so much that he's doing everything he can to fight for us, yeah. to yeah. win us back to his kingdom and into his love. Yeah. And, and now all of a sudden, just even sitting with Max, you see that in his heart. He mm -hmm. wants to do that mm -hmm. with, with those who feel alone because that's the kingdom. That's how much the mm. father loves us. And you see how much he experiences the love of the father in his own life. And, and that's what I want to give to my kids. I want them to experience mm. this thing of going, man, we have such a beautiful journey ahead because we get to go love people who feel alone, who are downcast, who are traumatized, who are hurting. We get to go love them and we get to invite them and introduce them to a savior that is so much bigger than anything they've ever been through. And to me, that's the joy of what it means to build for the kingdom of God. <laughs> I, that was a great answer. <laughs> we asked. Okay, I did. I did ask. <laughs> you so, you got to watch because I might start lot. preaching on it. So, But I think that gives such a different perspective on what family can be. Like, I think I, you know, you get so minuscule and so like insular in what, you know, the family issues and this kid and this, you know, this activity and this thing like this brings us way back out yeah. to like, what's the point of it all? Yeah. Well, and I would say this too, when my dad passed away in 2016, he passed of congestive heart failure. I, you know, even having gone to seminary, I never really learned a lot about heaven. And so I started reading every book on heaven that there was Randy Alcorn's book. I was and, just going to oh, say, yeah. that's the only book I've read on heaven. <laughs> yeah. and it's been a long time. Yeah. Randy Alcorn's book. Yeah. <laughs> Randy Alcorn's book, which is a great, great read. Um, 
John Eldridge has put one out. There, there was one that was written, written recently called Imagine Heaven mm-hmm. and uh, by a ni- guy named John Burke. And he, what he did was he took near-death experiences from all over the world. And these near-death experiences were people from all walks of life, uh, f- different religions, people who didn't know God, people, different ethnic backgrounds. And he took and he looked at the common experiences that people had in these near-death experiences. And then he filtered that through what the Bible says about what we'll experience in heaven. This is why this was the most profound book for me on heaven was because there's real life NDEs, right. near-death experiences that people mm-hmm. had. And I don't want to give away the book. I just, it's worth getting and reading. It, one of the, my greatest takeaway was all of these people, uh, most of these people had what was called a life review with Jesus, with the light, however they described him. Okay. And they're seeing their life lived out in the matter of seconds. There's no time or space in heaven, mm-hmm. right? It's just like they're seeing their entire life lived out before them. And even when they felt ashamed by how they treated somebody, they still felt no condemnation in his presence. Mm-hmm. Well, Romans 8, there's no condemnation in Christ mm-hmm. Jesus. Though they felt bad, they still were enveloped in this unbelievable sense of love. And you're going, wow. So, so there was a moment where there was one guy, I think he was a real estate guy or something like that from Kentucky of all places. And he said, but Jesus, I earned this award and I accomplished this feat and I did this. And, and, but the, none of those things were in my life review. And it was as if Jesus said to him, those things did not matter. What mattered was how you treated people on your way to getting those things. And my takeaway from the entire book of this whole thing was what, what is the effect that I will have left on someone else after I've left their presence? Mm. That the, the thing that matters in this life yeah. is what will, what, and it goes back to mm. how well did I love someone when I was yeah. with them in their, in that moment. Yeah. And to give that to our kids, that's the thing that excites me the most. I'm, I, I agree with you. I'm a little bit chuckling to myself because Val and I just had this conversation and with the kids because Val is really friendly to people that he doesn't know and that he probably won't see again, (laughs) 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 which always just kind of makes me laugh. And so we'll run into people. So say we're, you know, at a coffee shop and you're just paying for a coffee to go. Yeah. But he'll be like, They'll, he'll ring up the order, but he'll make a little joke and the person will kind of laugh. And then he'll be like, how's your day today? <laughs> and how's, you know, and he just gives them a few extra minutes and mm-hmm. says another joke and this and that. And I'm always like, who are you? Because like, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like you're serious all the time, but then these random people, you're like the nicest guy or whatever. And, um, and we started <clears throat> talking about it and laughing, but he, he's just like, because, because why not? Because I want my lasting impression to be something wow. really great and really nice. And I want people to feel kindness from me. And maybe I'm the only person that is going to make them laugh or smile during their day, especially when they're working. Like, yeah. I think that's what it, it's. It's usually when people are working, yeah. he'll kind of say like, hey, how's your day going? And if they go, oh, I'm really tired. I'm doing this. And he's like, mm-hmm. well, you hang it. You know, he just gives some sort of wow. funny joke and it, it it's like gives them levity or reprieve. And they just kind of laugh it off and it lightens their day. But I, he's like, yeah, you need to be nicer to people. And I'm like. <laughs> I'm the queen of nights. Come on. I've got like be kind on my wall. I wrote a book called kind is the new classy. I'm the nicest person, honey. And he's just like, you could be nicer. honey. <laughs> wow. It, but he convicted me in a way because I realized I was like, well, no, I, I just, if, especially in a place of business, like I'm just, I'm going in doing what I need to do. I'm kind. Yeah. I'm courteous. Yeah but I'm not giving any extra attention. And he's like, it's kind of like the way you text, honey. And I was like, excuse me. And he said, yeah. And the kids go, oh yeah, Papa's texts are the best. He adds all these emojis. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, excuse me. I'm like, I get it. I know I'm very blunt and to the point because I'm being efficient. Efficient. Mm -hmm. And they're like, 
but that it's just not that nice, mom. You could be nicer wow. like wow. pop is. And so it's now become a joke. So I am like extra emoji texting <laughs> and anyone that I run to run into, I'm always like, hey, and how's your day? And how's your whatever? <laughs> but my kids and Val are like, see, doesn't that feel good? Isn't that better? Wow. And I'm like, yeah, it totally does. But it they really convicted me in that way because of what you said, the lasting impression. And although we're talking yeah. about legacy in the form of what we want with our mm-hmm. children, and yes, that is the bigger, bigger legacy, but legacy doesn't stop with all the years. I just feel like yeah. you, uh, the, it's at least the lasting impression. That might be the last time I ever run into that person, but what impression am I leaving? Yeah, because yeah, you're bringing the kingdom of God with you. Exactly. And, and it's not that you have to share Jesus, right? but you're planting seeds. Yeah. You're, you're helping those people. You're softening mm. people's, we're softening people's hearts by the, the, the change that he's had in us. Yeah. yeah. And, and to me, that's Ephesians 3, 19, where it says, I pray, uh, Paul writes, I pray that you might know beyond knowledge, that you might know and experience beyond head knowledge, mm-hmm. the love of Jesus for you. Mm-hmm. And, and this is what my friend Jeremy uh, talked about when, when he gave this illustration, that Texas illustration was so brilliant. But for him, he was really wrestling and reconciling with how can I serve the kingdom without necessarily being a pastor, mm-hmm. you know? And yeah. that's, that's how. We're all pastors. You don't, the vocation of being a pastor is a vocation on this earth, but every single one of us can go out and make disciples. Every single one of us gets to shepherd the heart of other people or introduce them to the love of God. We all get to do that in in the ways that God has appointed us. Just because our assignments look different, Mm -hmm. we're all getting, we're all able to do that. And that's just a beautiful it, yeah. It's just really set me free mm-hmm. to, to be able, because I was like you, I was the person who I have, and, and I would justify it this way. And I don't know if I'm being like you, if this is how you were or, or, or but I mean, listen, I, that I, conversation was like two weeks ago. Well, okay. I, I, <laughs> this I, brand new. This I relate, I relate to that <laughs> because I can remember justifying I'm busy. I, I do a lot during the day. I, I got so much going on mm-hmm. with my kids with my wife, with work, that when I go out, I'm just going out and I'm, I'm like, I, uh, I have to be, I'm an introvert by nature, right? Okay. Like I don't, I, I get oh, wow. my energy from being alone. Okay. So when I'm with people, I've got to eventually go be by myself yes. in order to rejuvenate. And so that therefore when I go to a coffee shop or the pizza place or whatever, I now have, I now, I've just been given it. I think it's the spirit of God, a new energy for, mm. okay, I have to be with this person. Mm-hmm. truly with this person as opposed to, and, and I'll now get on a plane and I used to be the guy with the headphones in and don't bother me, but now I'll just ask Jesus and I'll say, what do you want me to know about this plane ride? Do I need to talk to the person next to me yeah. or not? Mm. And I don't want to be annoying, but I think there's always an opportunity to share the light of the gospel everywhere we go. And I want my yeah. kids to see me with the, yeah. with the desire to do that so that they can understand they have the ability to do that. It's yeah. like you're a representative of yeah. You know, we're ambassadors. You yeah. We're ambassadors. That's what the word says. Yeah. So okay. I w- oh, wait, I have a question. Okay. I want to ask because you're talking about in those last two weeks, this has been, <laughs> <laughs> this is new. Okay. If you were to think about your grandkids, mm-hmm. cause you're almost, you know, yeah, could be eventually there. could Love be it. entering that Good season question. soon. What do you hope mm-hmm. when you're there, they'll say about you? I hope that. Well, my kids and my grandkids are like, Grandma Candy, because that's what I want to be called. <laughs> Grandma Candy. <laughs> like, she's the best. She's so fun. Mm. She loves me. She wants to play with me. Mm. And I really hope, I mean, if I can have one legacy. I mean, my heart is just, I want them to know Jesus, but I want them to know, like, I'm, I'm the mom and the grandma that just shared my heart about God, that I did everything that I could. Like, I want to be known. We talked about this amazing woman, Sarah Trollinger, who has this organization called House of Hope. And she deals with, um, or ministers to troubled teenagers Mm -hmm. that are going through really difficult times with parenting and house them, all that. 
Sarah is either in her late 80s, maybe 90s. I'm not mm-hmm. sure of her age. But I'm like, that woman, mm-hmm. what a legacy. Yeah. What a yeah. legacy. The ministry that she's poured in is unbelievable. And while I don't mean to run a nonprofit, but I want the legacy yeah. to be like, my mom loved Jesus or my grandma loved Jesus, but my grandma shared Jesus with everyone. Yeah. Like that's, that's, that's it hands down. That's yeah. what I want. And that's what I really try to do within my <laughs> life and my ministry and what this whole podcast is yep. for. I keep saying, I just want to help bring people one step closer to Jesus. And I want to be known for that. Like if there's one thing, I mean, I hope people are like, yeah, she was really nice too. <laughs> Maybe she didn't emoji text that much, but I know that she really loved Jesus and she shared Jesus with people. You don't have to wait until November to vote. You already vote every day with your dollars. At GoodRanchers.com, you can make a powerful choice to vote for American meat and make your voice heard for transparency in our food. Good Ranchers sources exclusively from American farms, which supports local ranchers and makes sure you get high quality meat with no antibiotics or added hormones. When you shop at GoodRanchers.com, you're making a statement about the kind of values that are important to you. And right now, Good Ranchers is having a presidential promo. For a limited time, you can get free add-on for a whole four years until the next election. That means you get extra chicken breast, ground beef, bacon, or salmon in every order for four years. It's the perfect way to make sure you always have high quality meat in your kitchen. Every cut is individually packed and vacuum sealed. No more messy meal prep and no more wasted food because of freezer burn. Good Ranchers helps you get the most flavor and value out of every ounce of meat you buy, which is great no matter what the economy is like. Don't miss out. Use my code CANDY to claim this presidential promo worth over $1,200. GoodRanchers.com, American meat delivered. So good. Thank you for sharing that. What oh, you're doing. It is what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing and it. And I feel like it looks it different well. every, it, it, it just looks different. Yeah. It, because you <clears> don't, again, it doesn't have to be a major platform to share Jesus. You don't have to be a pastor (laughs) to share Jesus. But if you have the heart to just have connection and relationship with people, that's, that's all it takes. That's it. That's That's it right there. And there's, uh, um, I might be jumping the gun here. I'm just going to say this though. There was a listener question that I'd love to jump to it. it. Um, Katie had asked this. She said, uh, I'll never be famous. How can I make my mark on the world as a commoner? <laughs> and I just, I hope that this episode right here speaks to you. When we talk about being famous at home, that only starts by understanding that you already are. Mm-hmm. And it is, you are so loved by your father uh, in heaven. You read Psalm 139 and you just look at, he knows every detail about who you are. And we are all ambassadors. We're all, we're, we're, we're all ambassadors in his kingdom. We're all children of God in his kingdom. And I mean, we get to partner with him in making all things new. And that doesn't make you a commoner. That makes you mm-hmm. an heir to the throne. Yeah. And Hallelujah. I think that is where our yeah. fame comes from. And we don't need to work, look to the world. I don't want to be famous to the world. That's, I'd, I'd rather be in Hebrews 11. I want to yeah. be famous in God's eyes in the hall of fame of faith. I could care less about fame in the world, but fame in heaven, oh, that right there. Yeah. That's yeah. my, that's yeah. my two cents on Kate. And I'll tell Katie. you, Katie, uh, I think that celebrity fame is overrated. <laughs> There's a lot of, <laughs> lot of stuff, a lot of negative yeah. stuff that goes along with it. There, you know, there can be great things too. We mm. can always look at positives and negatives, but as someone who's, I guess, I guess, celebrity famous, um, to some extent, I would much rather take famous, famous for God, famous yeah. in heaven, famous yeah. for my father than celebrity famous known by the world any day. Yeah. And I mean it with all my heart. Yeah. Oh. It's like, there's a song, um, I think it's by Alyssa Smith, where there's a line in it where 
Yeah, it's gonna make me cry. Um, <laughs> I might need a second to get this what, out. I know what line you're talking about. But she says something to the effect of, "What if I waste it all? What if I like surrender it all, and all of heaven is cheering me on, and David's and David's pleading, sing your song, and Mary shouting." Waste it all. He's worth it. Mm. And I think. <laughs> mm. I think that's the laid down life. Right. Of a, of a believer or where it's like. <clears throat> will I waste it all? Like it might look foolish to the world. <laughs> and I think for me, like even. Uh. You know, I said I would never homeschool. <laughs> I said I would, oh my gosh, I said I'd never have another child. I said I'd never homeschool. I'm pretty much done with saying I'll never to God because, you know, thanks so much. <laughs> oh, awesome. Um, because uh, in the, you know, m many times I think I've said, oh, I'll, I'll never, you know, I'll never step out and do that or say that. And, um, this laid down life. I, I pray that's what my kids see. <clears throat> and, you know, our daughter, I remember talking to one of our youth leaders the other week and she said, we were having this meeting as like youth, the youth team or whatever. And they're like, just watching the growth in, in our daughter and how she had just like run to the front and like was praying over this, this other little girl and the words that she was saying and and they, the comment they made was, it sounds like I'm talking to Christy when I hear her. And it was that, um, like there's, uh, I pray that that's the effect that I leave on my kids. Yeah. I don't need to be known for anything, but I pray that they learn to waste it all. He's worth it. Yeah. And I'll tell you, the people that I, that have made the, the mark on my life and biggest impact in my life. And I've met some really cool celebrities. <laughs> I've met some big ones. Mm -hmm. I've worked with some big ones and they're not the people making the mark on my life. Yeah. The people that are making the mark on my life are the Sarah Trollingers in yeah. life. Well, that's right. Yeah. 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 So just yeah. remember that about being famous. Yeah. Maybe be famous for God. Yeah. <laughs> oh. How about one, another question? Um, this one's from Lindsay. She says, how do you not view every day as a countdown clock in your mind as your kids get closer mm. to graduating and leaving home? And the fear that once they leave, they'll never come home or want to be around again. Wow. Ooh. Well, we, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm in this season yeah, of life because so we have two this. that yeah. are gone. One's married. Um, Max is still at home and he's been in and out of home, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the great thing. So a lot of kids that leave, they come back. <laughs> and apparently from what we heard in this episode is he wants more time with you. So yeah. I know. how sweet is that? I know. Yeah. You know, I, I look at this and, um, I've never really been a worrier by nature. It's not who I am. So, um, but of course, like, I think I was more excited to see my kids graduate, not that they would leave, but just excited to see them spread their wings mm -hmm. and who they are becoming and excited to cheer that on. And so maybe there's an optimism there that you're not thinking about instead of dreading the leaving, mm -hmm. think about it in a way of like, the next season of life for them and how do I get to cheer them on and be a part of their yeah. life? Um, and do I create an environment at home mm. where they want to come back? And yeah. if you have a fear that they don't want to come home again, then, you know, it sounds like your kids are still, they're still at home. They haven't graduated yet. So yeah. make sure you've created space and atmosphere mm. in your home that they, they want to be around you. Um, Mm -hmm. Even even when they've left the nest. Yeah. And that's where we've started. Like It's all about the environment of the home that we live in. And I think there's a fear here. Mm -hmm. And we weren't given a spirit of fear, but of love, mm -hmm. power, and a sound mind. Yeah. And I think it's important to realize, I don't even think of a countdown clock necessarily. 
because I'm thinking about, I mean, you're getting ready. I mean, I, I should say getting ready unless it's prophetic. I don't know, but you will <laughs> uh, prophetically become a grandparent. You yeah, know, I don't right, know how soon, but, right, but you will right. be. And, and there will come a day, Lord willing, that we will be too. And I hope that, as you said, we cultivate, this isn't a countdown clock for me as much as it is, what are we cultivating to pass generational legacy? You know, yeah. it says, uh, you know, that blessing happens to the thousandth generation of those who love and seek my commands. And to me, it's cultivating that environment. I, I don't know about y'all, but I actually, you're in the season. I actually think about getting excited about becoming a grandparent and I'm not even close. Yeah, you know? oh, me too. <laughs> I get excited about thinking about the, that legacy and yeah. how we can begin to instill and continue to shape our family unit, our family legacy uh, through the generations uh, that, that this isn't a countdown clock. This is a, you have been given and your kids have been given all the time that was ordained for you under mm -hmm. heaven mm -hmm. to accomplish mm -hmm. everything that you, all the works he set out for you to do all the time has been there. It's, it's there. So for me, it's just looking back and going, okay, how can I make the most of that time today? And then I wake up tomorrow and I had Matthew six, don't worry about tomorrow. Today is enough mm -hmm. trouble of its own. How do I best make that time today? Yeah. And, and we just keep moving forward in that. That's, that's how I would. I love that. And, and I think like, this is speaking to loss. You know, like she's afraid of losing. Yeah, it's a good point. And I, I see it more like you've gained a daughter. Yes, absolutely. You're gaining. Like yeah. as your family grows, like you're actually expanding and you're growing. And, you know, we still do family vacations like with, I mean, there's a lot of us now with all the ki the kids and the, you know, brothers and sister-in-laws and grandkids. And it's just, it's almost become richer. It's, it was smaller at first and it was mm -hmm. tight and now it's bigger and richer. Yeah. And bodies, I think more humans, more souls. More and we beauty. see it that way versus yeah. the leaving and the losing. Yeah. We're adding and we're growing. So there's another question. <clears throat> this will be our last question <laughs> for today. But Kelly wrote in and it's what we're kind of already talking about. She says, I'm having empty nest fears and sadness. Mm -hmm. How do I get through it? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I think. As someone who, ha I certainly felt sadness when all three of mine were gone. Mm -hmm. When Max was gone, you know, he came back. I was like, whoa, my house felt really empty. Yeah. And I, although I didn't have fear about it, I had a sadness. Yeah. Like, good. man, I've had 20 some years with yeah. big personalities in our home. And it's just was filled with noise mm -hmm. and, and even, and dogs throughout. And, mm -hmm. you know, we lost our dog at the same time, you know, Max oh. was the last one to leave and, and it just felt, it just felt empty. Yeah. And so there was a sadness. I know how that feels. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the way, the way that I look at it, because we have cultivated strong relationships with our kids and even Natasha who doesn't even live in the same state as us anymore she still comes back mm -hmm. you know she still stays yeah. with us when she does come back to um to our home and if you if you have really poured into the relationships with your kids yeah. I, you know you're still going to have time with them and then you think about the seasons of yeah. if they get married, their family's growing. So you're mm -hmm. actually going to gain. And then I think about my parents because my parents right now are in a season where they four children and we all live in different places. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm some, I, you know, I'm not close, physically close to my mom and dad anymore because we moved. Mm -hmm. um, and she has like one <laughs> child left that she's. <laughs> Physically, they That's are physically good. close to. But, and here's what I, I talked to my mom about because this last year she said, um, you know, this was really hard for me, like this past Easter. She said it was the first mm -hmm. Easter that we weren't with any of you. She said, because we, you know, you guys were all in different states and some of you were out of town and we sat at home for Easter and that was mm -hmm. really challenging. And, and we used to have big mm -hmm. together parties. I mean, like 50, 60 people, my parents are growing up. So for them to be completely empty, even they have 17 grandkids and then not wow. be with them. And she said, it made me, me and your dad really, really sad. But I, what I realized is that we don't want to go out sitting in our home. And because you guys are all in different places, 
we're going to travel and we're going to go where you are. And my mom and dad have been going on road trips now for the last year. And they've been driving in the car. I mean, driving from California to Tennessee. Wow. I mean, driving all over the place, but they're, you know, making it fun and stopping in Arizona and stopping in Texas to visit some of their friends. And they just said, you know, the days aren't what they used to be, Mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean we can't create new days and fulfillment for ourselves. And she said, I had to shift my perspective that it's, it's not an empty house if I don't want it to be, but if I'm willing to get up and go to my kids, to my grandkids, uh, then we're going to be there. And so now my mom on her own is like, we're coming up this weekend. Um, We're traveling. You know, she's got her weeks marked out on the calendar and they just get in the car and drive. And I love them for it. So maybe, maybe Kelly, that's just something to look forward to instead of fearing it and being sad about it. But fear leads to wisdom when it's Mm -hmm. properly channeled. And it Mm -hmm. sounds like, you know, there's wisdom and going, okay, my fear is that I'm not going to get as much time. Now the wisdom is let's make the time. Let's figure out how to plan to do that. It sounds like your parents did that. And then sadness. I just think it's really important, Kelly, that we do grief, acknowledge Mm -hmm. the sadness, because what that points to is something beautiful that you lost. Mm -hmm. But when you channel it in such a beautiful way, if we don't grieve, we can't step into the new. Yeah. Uh, in a healthy way. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you grieve the old, it allows you to step into the new. And in this case, your parents, I, what a great example uh, to step into the new in such a beautiful way yeah. and mm-hmm. continue the family generational blessing and legacy mm-hmm. all around the country. Yeah, exactly. Oh, what a great way to close. <laughs> I know that is. Guys, thank you so much. I just love you. I love oh. you and adore you. Thank you for your wisdom, your guidance and your mm-hmm. conversation this season. I know it has blessed so many people. It's just well, been and we'll, a joy. We'll just be continuing to pray for you. And I know we'll we'll probably see you, you see you around yeah. real soon. <laughs> to be continued. To yeah. be continued. Hey, Josh and Christy's book, Famous at Home, is linked at Candice.com, where you can also get our free PDF called The Healthy Home Guide. It's a simple resource to help you understand emotions in your family. Just go to Candice.com to find the link. And it's also in our show notes. Guys, thanks for joining us today. Until next time, be grateful all day, every day. If you value local, trustworthy, and high quality food, now is the perfect time to join the Good Ranchers family. I was thrilled when my first Good Ranchers box showed up and it was all still perfectly frozen. And what I really love about Good Ranchers is their commitment to transparency. They believe you have the right to know exactly what's in your food. I mean, hello. (laughs) And they are also amazing supporters of this show. Good Ranchers sources all of their meat from local U.S. farms, so you're getting the best of the best. No antibiotics, no added hormones, just pure, delicious meat you can trust. And do you ever notice when you're in the store, when you buy chicken or beef, it costs more and the portions weigh less every time you buy it. But imagine having top quality, 100% American beef, chicken, pork, and wild caught seafood delivered right to your door. Just head over to GoodRanchers.com and subscribe to any box to unlock savings. Good Ranchers is where you can get 100% USA grown meat you can trust that's tender and full of flavor every single time. With meat prices continuing to go up and the quality at the store going down, Good Ranchers can save you hundreds. Your taste buds, your wallet, and local ranchers will thank you. GoodRanchers.com, American meat delivered. Thanks so much for watching. Click like if you could relate to the stories Josh and Christy shared and comment what question would you ask if you could. Candy Rock Entertainment, all rights reserved.